In the first episode of Making Sonic in Game Builder Garage, we helped our slow, pale friend, Sonic Person, look the part and get some speed. While he's happy about all the improvements so far, he's still not quite where he'd like to be. The next thing we're going to add now is the classic spin dash. Sonic stops in place and spins to generate some force and then blasts off at high speed in his ball form. We're going to be adding that to our Sonic Person build today. We open up the programming screen right where we left off, and the first thing we're going to do is add in the spinning spherical object for Sonic's ball-shaped form. So we're going to add a simple sphere object and an X hinge connector, so we can attach our new sphere object to the moving object. Then in the sphere settings, we're going to turn everything off except for visible for now, and we're going to change it so that it is center own connection point and Y negative target connection point, so that the sphere rotates on its center axis from beneath our moving object. And we're gonna change the size of the moving object so that the ball seemingly rests on the floor. We'll also make it blue so that it fits better with the design. We're gonna move it over to the right and add in the logic for rotating the ball. We're gonna start with a constant node on set to one and that's gonna plug into a counter. We'll plug the constant into the count up on the counter and we'll give it a loop setting range of zero to 30. So the ball should complete a full 180 degree half rotation every half second. My math might be wrong, I'm not very good at math at all. Then we'll add in a map node on to process our output from the counter. The input range will be 0 to 30, just like the counter outputs. And the output range will be negative 180 to positive 180, which matches up with the input range of the X hinge. So now that that's done, we hit play, we should notice that the ball is rotating. You can change the speed by adjusting the counter and the map. Next we're going to add in two textures to texture the ball to make it look like Sonic is spinning. I'm adding two because I want to add variation to the texture. One could be set to a texture face of x positive, x negative, and that's going to be the sides, so you could do circular lines. The other texture is going to be set to every other texture face, and that could be straight lines, and that's going to be all around the ball, but not on the sides. So we like the way it's looking, but it's rotating in the wrong direction, and that fix is really simple, we just switch it from counting up to counting down. So the ball looks good and it rotates in the right direction. Now we're gonna add our button to activate the spin dash and we're gonna use the X button. We'll also wanna be able to handle when we're not pressing the X button just as much, so we'll add a not node on in first thing. First we'll make it so that we can switch our textures so that it looks like we've changed forms or shapes. We're gonna send the signal from the button press to the two new textures and we're gonna add a blank texture to both the person and the moving object with the spikes. We'll activate the blank texture when we press the button and we'll make sure that the spikes activate when we're not pressing the button. We'll turn the ball to invisible so you see the textures more clearly. And now when we hold X, you'll notice that we turn into our ball form and it looks pretty good and smooth right now. Now we're gonna manipulate our movement stick outputs. So we're gonna take the two movement sticks up, down and left, right, and we're gonna give them some room and move everything else over since we're gonna be working on them next. For each movement axis, we're gonna have one AND node on and one multiply node on. Reason being, we want to create a gate for the stick output and make sure that the output only gets to the person if certain conditions are met. So the AND node on actually accepts positive or negative signals, so we don't have to worry about dealing with negative signals from the movement sticks. What we're gonna do is get rid of the connections that the sticks are currently sent to and remember where they are for later, and we're gonna connect them to one end of the AND input. Then we'll take the NOT signal from our button press and put it into the other end. We'll take the AND signal and put it into one of the inputs on the calculate node on. The other input will be the raw stick data. What we're doing is making sure that the stick's output only gets sent through when we're not pressing the X button. Since multiplying any number by one will give you that number again, we're using the multiply node on to get the positive AND signal and multiply it by the stick output so that it kind of just passes through. So now when we hold X, Sonic person does not move, they stay in place, which is important for the spin dash. Next we can work on the actual spin dash logic. Now you can't just press the X button and immediately gain a bunch of speed, you actually need to hold it for a while. We'll add in a counter node on and set it to a range of 0 to 60. 60 being 60 frames in one second. I want you to have to hold the button for at least one second in order to get the speed boost. Then I'll use a comparison node on and a constant set to 60. When the counter reaches 60, we want that positive output. We'll also have the not pressing the button input as the reset counter. So the counter will instantly reset any time you lift your finger off the button. There will be one frame where the counter is equal to 60 and you let go of the button. That's the frame that's going to trigger the spin dash. I'm a big fan of flags and we'll be using them a lot. 
This flag is going to be used for the spin dash state. It's going to determine whether we're spin dashing or not right now and in the future when we add more features and enemies. Then we'll add a timer so that we can cancel out of our spin dash state. Since we turned on the flag, we need some way of turning it off and returning to our normal state. I'm going to use a timer with 2.25 seconds. So after two and a quarter seconds, the flag will turn off and the spin dash will end. Then we'll just multiply the output of the flag to add the boost to our moving object, just like we did with our accelerated movement. So now if you hold down the spin dash for at least one second, you'll get to basically top speed for two and a quarter seconds. Next, we're going to take the flag output and activate the spinning textures and also the invisible texture on the person. Now making Sonic's spikes disappear is actually more complicated than I expected. It's not like we're just activating an invisible texture because the person doesn't have another texture. So what we're going to do is check for things that would cause the spikes to disappear. And if there are none of those things, then we'll activate the spikes. We're going to do that by using an addition node on and putting in to its inputs anything that would cause the spikes not to appear. The spikes would not appear if we're holding down the X button. The spikes would also not appear if we're currently spin dashing. So if that input is anything but zero, the spikes will just disappear. They know they should get out of the way if any of those other inputs are active. Now you don't actually need the addition node on. I leave it there so that I can remind myself what I'm doing if I ever come back to it. But you could probably just get rid of it and put any other positive outputs directly into the comparison to zero. Now we're essentially done. It's important to comment your code out and segment it separately so that when you come back to this later, you can actually kind of figure out what you're doing. Otherwise, it's gonna be hard to get back into after a while. So we're actually all done with the spin dash. Hold down the X button. If you do it for at least one second, you'll get an impressive speed boost and you'll stay in your ball form for two and a quarter seconds and you can jump out of the ball form and then you'll be released from the ball form and you could go into a full speed run. Starting a spin dash is also a quick way to immediately stop the momentum of your character. It looks good and we'll just keep building on this for the future parts of the series. There's also a code in the description if you wanted to take it for yourself and do something else with it or to catch up or if you had difficulty following along today. This part was pretty programming heavy, so the next two will likely be something like adding in rings, a ring system, and enemies. I'll see you in the next one.